memories, memories, memories. She first got to the music scene with what is arguably the most successful all-girl group of all time, the Go-Go's, and then went on to make Heaven a Place Right Here on Earth. The Grammy-nominated singer, songwriter, and New York Times bestselling author Belinda Carlisle is here with us now, out of the kitchen and into the family room for a nice conversation about this <laughs> yeah. career of yours, this yeah. journey that you have been on. Let's go, let's rewind back to like even that, that moment. Mm. An all-girl group back then was really unheard of to, to see the, and have that sort of success. What right. made you guys think you could pull that off? Well, we didn't, I mean, actually this it was like a girls club. We didn't, we just formed a band so we could have lots of boyfriends. <laughs> <laughs> that was your motivation. And, and actually it was, yeah. and it was fun. It was in the punk days when you could, you could be terrible and be on stage. And we didn't know how to do any, we, we didn't know how terrible. to play. Well, we had no idea how to play our, our guitars or write songs or plug our guitars into amplifiers. We started from zero. We wrote songs, mask, putting masking tape on the frets of the guitar and wrote songs like nine, two, seven, three. <laughs> and that's how we started. And it just was one of those things that was meant to be. Was it instantaneous, your success, or did you have to do? Two years, which is pretty instantaneous, actually, in the yeah. scheme of when things, of yeah. But we had no idea how to do anything. We had a, we didn't have a Svengali or a Simon Cowell. We, it, we had met, uh, female management, female roadies, and it was just a girls' club. And we thought, well, if we become rich and famous one day, that'd be great. But um, there was obviously some drive to be successful then, you know, be, behind all that. And from 1978 to 1981 is really, I mean, three years. Yeah. And then we had the number one album. And how, how did that happen, though? Did you, did you send your tape to somebody over at Capitol Records or did somebody find you? What happened? Well, we were selling out every club in America that we'd play at, and there were lines around the block, and record companies would come, but they'd all tell us, we can't sign you because you're all women, and there's been no track record of women wow. before you that, is, that have been successful. There was the Runaways and Fanny, but they were on a, successful on a cult level. Mm -hmm. So we were told that to our faces, because you're women, we can't sign you. Sign you. So finally somebody came along and took a chance. But... Um, it was just, you know, sheer hard work and... What was life like on the road with the girls and trying to keep it together? Well, we were on the road for two years straight and that, you know, it was, it was a mistake in retrospect. What? It's, it really, it was um, for being so young and having that kind of success and being on the road and not... When you said the road, it, you mean here in America? Did you go overseas uh, at all? Everywhere, all over the world. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. But you were more or less like the breakout star, like early on, because you were. Everybody was talking about you. Did that cause tensions within the group and cause any kind of problems for you? Well, I think that people tend to focus on the lead singer of any band, and that does, you know, in, in the case of the Go Go's, it did cause some problems, and and that wasn't the reason for the breakup. But um, yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty normal, though. Uh, what was the reason? Yeah, why, the reason? why? Just too much success? Um, to handle that? Ego, publishing, drugs. Really? All the cliches that break up young bands. And, um, you know, we were, we formed in 1978 and, and broke up in 1984. And it felt like 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> was that unavoidable, yeah. though? I mean, when you look at the success you had, sooner or later you're just going to go, look, somewhere along the lines, there's ego's going to get involved, oh, yeah. drugs, alcohol, the it's publishing. It's pretty normal, especially then when, when a lot of drugs didn't have this, they didn't know a lot about cocaine, yeah. you know, and if I'm going to mention any drugs. But, um, or there wasn't a lot of stigma attached yeah. to, they didn't know a lot about drug addiction back then, really. Right, right. Um, not like they do now. And, um, it's just, you know, as we've fell victim to all the cliches, it's, it's, when you're that young and that successful, it's really hard to handle something like that. Yeah, sure. How sure. did you transi transition into a solo career? Well, I knew I always had the opportunity, and uh, so as soon as the band broke up, I jumped right into it without thinking. And then after it was, I finished the album, it was like, uh-oh, <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> Were you still uh, on, did you still have your addiction at that time? Um, I had my version of sobriety. What was which, that? Which was I could um, pretty much do everything except for cocaine. <laughs> I mean, if yeah. I want to get down to the... And that was my version. I sponsored myself. Everybody would roll their eyes and go, oh, you know. And that was... 
It was hard because really I was an, ad an addict uh, acting out in secret for years and years and years. And, you know, of course it gets to a point when any addict or alcoholic can hit a bottom, which I did. What was but it took bottom? me a long time. Um, it was a spiritual bottom. Mm -hmm. It was, it was, on the last, on, the, on my last, I'm, I'm almost eight years sober now. And yeah, I know, yes. I, know, and yeah. I had a long run. <laughs> and, um, I just did that morning, on my, the, the morning of my last, like, three day, um, you know, drug and alcohol binge, looking in the mirror and not seeing a light there and a soul there and not looking like myself. And that was, and I knew that the end was sort of, you know, if I made it, that, that I, I had to stop because there was, there was nobody home. There's nobody home. You made that decision to stop that morning, but then you had decided, from what I read, After the, that you were going to finish off the rest of your drugs. I had. To, I said, I well, I had a. Uh, but I think it could have been real, but probably, well, maybe not an auditory hallucination. And it was like, you're going to die if you and be found in a hotel if you carry on. I said, okay, I'll stop, but let me finish what I have. <laughs> okay. and so, and, but that's what I did. Yeah. And then I, well, I didn't wake up because I never went to sleep. But um, the next day it was like, that's it. And, and that was it. you know, for me, I was relieved. It's not about willpower. It's about surrender. And I could finally, finally surrender to the fact that, you know, I'm a human being and I need help and and uh, you know stop trying to stop trying to be so strong and so you know it was eight years ago at first I wanted to drink still and my sponsor yeah. said uh uh <laughs> no that's not gonna fly so do it our way which I did and and I've been sober since well your husband's been extremely supportive of mm -hmm. you during this whole ordeal right which is probably well I don't want to put words in your mouth how has that helped you get over your addiction and to where well, you are today. He's he's shown unconditional love through all that. I mean honestly he should be knighted for <laughs> for, for <laughs> what he's had to, I had to put him through. I mean um, but he always said that he saw the essence of the person underneath all that. And you know I think after if it had gone on any further any longer he probably would have said you know I, I've had it. But sure. um you know, I when I this the the first time around I did it for everybody else. That's why I didn't do it correctly. And the second time around I did it for me. What is Which your helps biggest, everybody yeah. else? Actually. Yeah, exactly. Excuse me. Uh, what is your biggest regret though during this? Oh, you want? Okay. You know what? <laughs> we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to find out what what Melissa's biggest. <laughs> Mel Belinda. 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 I'm, Belinda. <laughs> I'm sorry. Big, Belinda. Sorry. Right. Regret. Come back. Thanks. Sorry. Bye. Bye.